Still a bunch of glitter on this damn table. Good afternoon, good morning, whenever you are tuning in, welcome to the No Manga Podcast, a weekly show about all things skateboarding. My name is Rick Beta. Oh, sorry, I'm stretching a little bit. Just realized I was slouching over. Ah, there we go. And yeah, I'm a day late. You know, as I had an awesome Father's Day with uh, the Pops, you know, we were hanging out at his house. So it was a great, great day, and I actually had to go back there today to with my um, quote-unquote tech support hat. So I'm back. You know, it's Monday. It's fine. I'm here. Everything's going to be a okay but shout out to all the rad skater dads out there. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, past, present, you know, future dads. You just found out you're going to be a dad. You know, props to you. Y'all make this uh, being a dad thing look easy because it's not. You can follow along on social media at Rick Beta, R-I-C-K-B-A-T-A. And you can also email the show, nomongapodcast at gmail.com. So as I mentioned last week, you know I had to watch and chime in. You know, on this first one that's coming up, of course, I'm talking about the hilariously titled Rough Cut, Real Presents a Shot. And we all know Rough Cut and a Shot, those, it's like you just shake your head, you're like, no, those don't go together. And see, I went into this one with low expectations, you know, very low expectations of seeing, you know, a shot like truly roughing it out. And I was right, you know, this was definitely a a rough-ish cut. And we all know that. We It's not like we're shocked when we see that. You know, I'm, I was surprised. But it was crazy because it, it was a rough cut that had me pausing right from the start. That's right, right from the start. I was already hitting the pause and rewind button 34 seconds in. Those of you who have seen it know what I'm talking about. So it was that first interaction. Uh, I'm just going to call him with that worker. That was epic. It was beautiful, actually. Like... I'm so glad we have someone like a shot out there representing skateboarding. You know, that's what's up. Real has a real one. That's what's up. And we all know that. And they know that. That's why they have the dude on the team. But here's how it went down, though, after, you know, a shot made an attempt and quote, can I get one more try? All in a nice voice, like chill vibes, no yelling key, right? I don't even think he had his board in his hand. He wasn't in a threatening, uh, you know, demeanor or position. He wasn't ready to use it as a weapon. None of that nonsense. And guess what the dude said? One more try, bro. Just real cool. You know, uh, basically return, re- reciprocated the vibe, the chill. The, 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 the exchange was even keel. Because that's the key right there. You know, you get what you give off as far as like vibe wise, right? There was no yelling. Hell, I, actually, I don't even think there was any ego at all for that matter. And sure, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does start with us, the skaters. And I've mentioned this before, I think even in episode three or four. I was complaining about that. One security guard just got beaten almost to death. It starts with us. How we interact, you know, how we attempt to respond to the situation is key. You know, and many of these workers think about it. I mean, how many of you really enjoy your job? Most people are like, oh, I can't wait for Friday. Get the hell, I get the weekend off. And that's if you're lucky to have a Monday through Friday job. Sometimes you're working the weekends. They're like, these guys are on security or when skaters are coming. And so they're, most of them are already grumpy as it is and they hate their job. And then having to roll up, you know, to like their establishment, and it just sends them over the edge to begin with. And then we roll up with our skateboards and it sends them over the edge. You know, I am a skater, right? And I, have, I work at a high school. I have kids that come on campus to skate, and I'm cool with them. But, well, hey, guys, can't skate right now. You know, we, we have, literally, there's a class in session. They're, they're right there. The teacher's complaining to me, so you guys need to go. But I'm cool about them. Hey, what kind of board are you writing? What kind of tricks are you working on? Blah, blah, blah. So I get it, but it's all in the interaction. And most, for the most part, the kids have been cool because, we you know, it's how you give off. But I, of course, know, knowing that I'm a skater in advance, I can kind of, you know, frame their minds to say hey you guys it's not a good idea to be skating here right now just come back later that's what i said dude come back later come back after school at five six man it's the, the campus is yours you got there's a spot over here let me show you but anyway but there's no uh there's no confrontation with this guy with the shot you know and shortly thereafter what did he say he said thank you i really appreciate it <laughs> i was like what like mind-blowing emoji right <laughs> and i seriously i was like what the hell did i just witness 
And now I know a ton of you probably already do this for the most part anyways, and it's not documented. Oh, Rick, I don't have a camera following me around. I do that all the time. I'm cool with these guys. That's great. Keep it going. But I'm so happy they opened up with this clip. I mean, not only was it like a great moment in like skateboarding, it was also just for humanity, for all humanity. There is still hope out there. <laughs> Treat others how you want to be treated is a good start. And Ashad is leading the way with that mentality. You know, and that's and what's crazy is this great moment wasn't even done yet. Get, it gets better. It gets better. The worker even told him like, "Good job." He's all, "That's your walk off." He's like, "Yeah, great job." After he landed his trick, you know, the very next try, right, proving that he is indeed a man of his word. But that worker's so chill. And he seems kind of like the guy who, if he had the chance, he would have sat down with the shot after and kind of critiqued his technique and give him some feedback and tell him just how proud he is of him you know i'm really proud of you ashad that was great you did that second try and after i told you one more try and it still it gets even better after that because ashad even volunteered to help him put back up the i guess that barricade or whatever that that scene i kid you not no joke almost made me cry you know i had to look around make sure no one like in the house was watching me like wait wait why, why are you getting all emotional man you're watching a skate video. No, it's not. It's a rough cut. I would have yelled at him all of a sudden. But that was beautiful. I was like, damn you, Ashad. Get me all worked up. Get me all emotional. And I, I literally, I round, rewound it like, what, three or four times. So beautiful. But the final time around, I, I kept trying to figure out, what was up with, was it a toilet sale? 38 seconds in, it, I kept hearing, he's like, yeah, is that... Is that what Ashad was asking about? A toilet sale? I need more info on the toilet sale too. Come on, send it my way. You can never have too many, right? I mean, I don't really need one right now, but if one's on sale, I mean, I can make, looking around this garage, I can make it happen, you know? So can someone close to Ashad, you know, please forward, you know, that info, uh, whatever info you have on the toilet sale, please forward it to me. And did I miss out? I mean, I know this was probably recorded months ago. But yeah, he was asking about a toilet sale. I know he's just kind of making small chat. But, you know, anyway. And as Ashad said earlier, I really appreciate it. Yeah, moments later, though, Ashad's humble, bragging. Minute six, two times in a row. He's like, ah! He's got the fin- I, you can't see, but he's got the fin- two fingers on each one. Ah! You're pointing at the camera. I'm doing it right now to the mic. It looks really funny. Two in a row. Pat himself on the back. But you know what's crazy, though? The brain is a funny... I guess muscle or thing or whatever you want to call it, tool. Because it was about like 221. And when I was just about to think, I'm like, you know, I haven't seen him fall yet. This guy's incredible. You know, of course, the board kicked out and, you know, reminded me that he's human. He's real. No pun intended. I mean, up until then, it was just his, his video part without music, right? You know, which I'm totally fine with. I prefer, I, I've mentioned it before, I, I, I wish skate videos didn't have music in it, you know? Sometimes I don't vibe with the songs that are chosen. Like, oh, that song's lame. I'm not feeling it. Turn it down. I'd rather just hear wheels and grinds. But I was, you know, starting to get worried that a shot is too good. Too perfect. We needed to see that at that moment. And not only can the guy, like, skate better than anyone, you know, listening right now, he can also fall better than anyone listening. You know, even future generations tuning in, what, 20 years from now, a shot still falls better than you. That's a cold hard fact. You got to embrace that. You got to accept it. See him at two minutes fifty five seconds for a proper example. You know, tiptoes down that rail like nothing, duff, duff, like a little cat. Like oh, you know, you know how people get sacked just trying that. Call it a day. <laughs> He's ridiculous. Who runs out? That's, I mean, that's <sighs> made it look so beautiful too. Actually, you know what? I think Shane and Dylan need some company. That's right. I'm going to go ahead and make it official right here, right now. I mean, it's long overdue. I, I, I think maybe I was just in denial or something. Didn't want to admit it. But a shod wear is bad for skateboarding. There, I said it. He's bad for skateboarding. He has Shane and Dylan now have company. His ability to tiptoe out of handrail tricks is going to give kids, you know, across the world the wrong impression about the sport. That isn't good. That's not good. Not at all, a shot. You can't be doing that in front of kids, man. Kids can't see that. 
They're going to think that it's, you know, it's so easy to run out of a trick because of you. It's like, it's, it's nothing. I can do this. Mommy, look, I'm not going to get hurt. Watch this, mommy. You know, only to end up on, you know, that kids getting hurt IG page. Going viral over there. I was just trying to be like a shot. You know you would be directly responsible for that as well. Yes, I'm talking to you, Ashad. <sighs> anyway, now that I got that off my chest, I feel much better. I think that was boiling it up for a while now. It just came to fruition, poked his head out. You know, it is what it is. You know, moving on. What's really cool about the attempts that happened like shortly thereafter, about what, 313, per my notes here. It's not the actual tricks, but what he does after them. So when he's kind of rolling off the curb, you know, uh, after he did the back lip and the back tail, right? And then it's what he did into the street, off the curb, that says so much about him. Because he's not going to settle for, like, some lame effort. Nope, not him. He's going he's gonna to go back, do it again, and make it right. You know, whether it's a simple ollie or ollie 180. Most people would have just been just fine, right, cutting it right there. You tell the editor, like, you know what, let's just cut it off right there, Okay. And be happy just having the make. Not a shot. He went up again. Even if it was a simple ollie. Or a switch ollie. A shot is too damn good. And a perfectionist. But human. I was not at all shocked when I saw that fakey flip, you know, pole slam about 619. The one that they actually, that was the only one they left in the uh, original video. And you know, the one where the dog, he saw it coming. Dog had like sad eyes. Like, oh, you know, he could have could have barked. Could have saved him there, uh, uh, I don't know, Scooby, whatever I want to call you. That one. Because no way in hell he's going back for one more after that. Nope. One and done. And I'm glad they kept that, though, in the final cut. Because it just shows how much he, he does. He battles through to get these clips. But I'm like, that one had to hurt. Like, a lot. He got, sm he got smacked, like, right, right in the liver, right? Right in that area. Like, boom. And that switch hard flip that he got in San Francisco was fun to watch. You know the one that he had to go back and get like a cleaner version, a cleaner make the next day? Because like I mentioned earlier, that says so much about his perfectionism. That says a lot about him. Quote, that other switch hard flip was not cutting it, bro. Only because he knew. He knew he could flip it better, and he did. He already had a, multiple legs, multiple makes. And then again, too, six like he did six tries to get that switch front heel. After getting it on what, well, the second try wasn't as good because he kind of, he kind of one-footed it out of it, but he had it after the third try, you know? I bet the random people that were watching were probably like wondering why he kept doing the same thing over and over and over. He already landed. He rolled away. Everyone celebrated. Nope, nope, nope. He had to get it just right. No baker makers, you know, no feet off the board. He had to get it right. Six tries. He had it, you know, technically after the second one. You edit out right before that foot comes in, you know, comes up. And you know, one thing I was very shocked to learn from this video, though, is how much Ashad and I have in common. Like, real talk for a moment, okay? We could straight up be, like, skate BFFs. Because I, too, am also bad at feebles. You know, glad, glad it wasn't just me, Ashad. Yeah! So refreshing to hear that from him, you know? So thank you for, like, admitting that, for one. Maybe we need to hang out more often, man. You know, we can practice feebles together. Except you'll be doing them on rails, high rails, mine, curbs. You just have to be patient with me, man. You know, but still, you know. But I'm, gl I'm glad to find out that we have so much in common now. You know, that's so cool. Like, literally, I'm smiling right now. And you know, I was excited to see my favorite trick from the, you know, the video. Got to see the quote unquote attempts. That's right. I'm talking about the Ollie. Starting about 16 minutes in. That's what's up. That was my favorite trick in the video. So damn gnarly. And he did it third try. <sighs> Are you kidding me, man? A couple run outs and a make? I mean, someone tell me that there's some footage that got destroyed or lost or, you know, they actually recorded over it. Something, right? He did that on the third try. And yes, it's an ollie, but did you see in, how insane that was? Go back and watch it. The roll-in, the landing, a lot could go wrong there. They had to put like a sign on the bottom so you, you could roll away. It's just ridiculous. And then we got to see the, uh, the full interaction with the day drinkers. Yeah, delete, delete. Is that what they said? Delete? 
man, I'm old. But hey, now I know if I chug a beer down, I have to at least hear and or say, delete. I was surprised not to hear any IPAs being called out, though. Got to give some love to the, the dark and hoppy beers, my guys. No Tony Hops, you know, West Coast IPAs up in the house. No, no Sierra Nevada, no torpedoes. And yes, that was a shout out, free shout out for uh, Black Plague uh, Brewing. You know, I've got you. You're welcome. I mean, of course he downed that blue moon. You know, they're, they're, oh, they always go down easy. That's, they're like water. They give you a little, what, is it lemon or lime? It's been a while since I've had, no, not lemon. Yeah, or an orange. Whatever, yeah, it's a refreshing drink, especially after skating. Dude, he killed it. And I love how they're trying to break it down for him and be like, you must be really thirsty, sir. That's why you drank it so fast. Get this guy some H2O fast. Come on. Get this guy a drink. He's thirsty, guys. <laughs> oh, delete. Delete. I love videos when I learn something so now I can stay hip and cool. Like, so I, I'm going to be that old guy at a party on you know, delete. And people are like, what the hell are you talking about, Rick? What you, delete what? I don't even have my phone out, dude. Delete what? Please let me know that's what they were saying. Someone that's hip and much younger than I am. But you try, all I got to say is try that with a Waldo's. Things will get a little bit more challenging. I bet you can't chug that bad boy and yell delete. You're like, <coughs> delete. Delete. Mm. Damn, that's hoppy. 11%. Are you, student? Are you kidding me? And shout out to the, you know, my guy in the Kittle jersey. Dude knows what's up. Nice jersey. And I'm assuming that's a Kittle jersey. I didn't see the name. It wasn't Vernon Davis, but still. 85, Niners. I noticed. But was that NBD too? Now I think about it. Has anyone ever gotten a trick and then had like a beer purchase for them like moments later at the same spot, like right across the street? I'm sure that's happened before, right? I mean, has it been in documented on video? Let me know. I'd love to talk about it more on this, this show. You know, I'm fascinated by weird things like that. You know, so let me know if it's something that I've missed or maybe it's NBD, you know? But I think Ashad just had an NBD moment right there. You know, pretty crazy. But this, as you can tell, this rough cut was awesome. However, as much as I loved seeing this footage, my only complaint, it wasn't long enough. I want more. I want more, damn it. I mean, there's just something about him watching him skate that, I mean, it actually enhances my mood. Like, I'm happy talking about it on this podcast right now. I could have been grumpy, what, an hour ago? I'm like, I don't want to record today, this and that. But no, he, he makes me smile and laugh. Like, the vibe, like, you feel it through the damn screen, whether it's an iPhone or TV. You know, and all the while he makes you want to go skateboarding and also quit skateboarding in the same uh, basic sitting <laughs> because he's just that good. You're like, oh, I want to go skate. And then you see, no, nah, I'm not. I suck. I'm horrible. I can't. I'm, I can't do it. But yeah, be sure to check this one out if you haven't done so yet. It's only 29 minutes of your time and it's time well spent. Trust me. Oh, quick speaking of not being long enough. We got to see some more Jimmy Wilkins footage last week, and it was for his real Welcomes Jimmy Wilkins part, and I don't even care what they called it because all I saw was Jimmy's name, and I clicked play, You know, knowing that I'm going to get some kick-ass Vert action on my screen. So go watch that. I'm going to hype up Vert as much as possible. So stop hating Von Vert. Put a piece of tape over that Vert button, okay? Jimmy's got your back. He's going to entertain you, and he's only asking for 2 minutes and 47 seconds of your time. That's it. Go watch it. If you're a vert hater, like I said, put a piece of tape over that vert button. Jimmy's going to change your mind. How can you hate on him? How can you hate on that? That's That says that says more about you. That's a you problem. It's not vert. Vert rules. Quick hydration break. Get this guy some water, man. He's so dehydrated. He's been skating all day. Delete. Anyway, and lastly, I want to talk about the upcoming finals night at the barracks. That's right, BATB12, which seems to have been like going on for like, I don't know, nine years, is finally coming to a close. And although I haven't watched like each and every battle, there have been some very, you know, good ones along the way, some great ones along the way, I should say. You know, P-Rod versus Chris Cole, that was pretty close and exciting. You know, I always love seeing Luan Alvarez matches. He always kills it. He stomps those tricks. Like, on you can just feel it. 
stomps, always all four hitting the ground, all four wheels hitting the ground, you know, especially when he faced um, Deshaun Jordan. Nigel's round was cool. Very good. That was a very close one, too. So it's good to see that. I mean, for as much as people give the Barracks crap, I still do find these entertaining. They're fun to watch, you know, and I agree. Yes, it has, you know, felt long. And with the, the the short attention spans of like so many attention span of so many of the kids and, and even adults these days, that can actually backfire on you. But nevertheless, it has finally come to the final four. We're here. Four riders remain. Who will be left standing? So we have Tyson Peterson against Soa. Is it Kroto, Krotkov? And I know I butchered that because I don't hear his name enough to kind of keep it in memory. So we have that round. And then also P-Rod, Paul Rodriguez versus Jamie Griffin. And for the first group, I can totally like see Soa winning. You know, Tyler's got a bag of tricks. He's got the confidence. But Soa's got just a little bit more of an edge to me. So I can see him winning. I don't think it'll be like a shutout or a blowout. But I can see Tyler putting maybe... Maybe one, maybe maximum three letters on him, but it's probably going to end by one or two. Um, I can just see that it going that way. So Soa will advance to the finals. And I'm just going to come out and say it right now. I don't see anyone beating Jamie. No one. Even if they had to substitute one, like one of the finals with someone else, it's a done deal for Jamie. He's that good. I mean, did you see what he did to little Dre, Vinny Bond? Just look at the lengths of those videos. That tells you all you need to know right there. Even if you don't even watch it. Oh, damn. That's when you know you have a you know, close one or not. If it's in the five minutes or under range, it's not even close. And Jamie was being nice, you know, doing a ton of like calm and warm up tricks, starting off with a kick flip, you know, starting off with a you know, 180 flip, you know, just he, he knew what he was doing. He was being polite, knowing that he's going to get, you know, he's got this, he's going to advance to, you know, the finals. But he could have ended it, both of those in about a minute and a half, you know? And little Dre's a beast, too. Vinny, too. They've got skills. But he just, like, just destroyed them in no time at all. And as much as I love P-Rod, I mean, I I don't think this is going to backfire him either. There's no way in the hell he wins. Well, actually, unless, unless he chooses rock or scissors, gets offense, and never, ever, 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 ever loses it. I mean, he basically needs to wear Jamie down, right? Because if he misses and things turn over to Jamie, it will get ugly and fast, especially if they got all the common tricks out of the way. This is, you know, Jamie's contest to lose, pretty much, you know. And I, I wonder if they're second-guessing now inviting him to the event, you know, because who's going to stop him from, like, winning again and again and again? You know, they're going to have to come up with, like, some Malto-esque rules for Jamie moving forward, you know, or... Maybe pretend like, hey, you guys, um, let's keep uh, BATB13 kind of on the hush-hush. Don't post it anywhere. Don't tell anyone. Don't even talk, make eye contact about it, You know, We're just going to have to do this kind of underground style and make sure Jamie never finds out about it. Or maybe, you know, or if it's live, they'll have it when Jamie's, you know, supposedly sleeping or just decline his calls. You know, Steve will pretend like he doesn't even know who like he is all of a sudden. You know, unfollow him on social media. Actually, knowing how Steve is, he that might probably that actually probably might work for him if he tries that route. Jamie will try calling. Ring, ring, ring. Steve's like, new phone. Who this? Jamie. We didn't have a Jamie Griffin in uh, Battle of Barracks 12. Who is this? Oh, wait, wait, I'm going in a tunnel. Stop trying to prank me, punk. Not anyone named Jamie. There's nothing online. It's all in the caffeine app. Yes, you don't know. There's not. You can't even find it. But Jamie, you probably have to hit up Costman too, and mind trick him. You know, I'm just speaking hypothetically. In the future, you're gonna have to maybe go the Costman route. Steve's gonna be on to you, man. He's not gonna let you back in. Costman, you might be able to convince him to to let you in the back door. Maybe, maybe. But it's unfair. It's it's not even close. All of those days practicing, you know, like his crazy tricks on the couch. Or on that rug, you know, and I think it was in his garage or whatever when it was raining outside. All that's going to pay off for him. Jamie was born for contests like this. And this contest was actually made for him and his style. I mean, he's definitely going to make P-Rod sweat. You know, P-Rod's going to earn his money uh, uh, tomorrow night. Like, big time. It's not going to be easy. But like I said, though, you you know me. I love P-Rod, you know. Hell, even if a shot was in there, I'd be saying the same damn thing without hesitation. 
without hesitation. This one is so lopsided, but I actually kind of love it. I mean, it will be interesting to watch. Well, that well, that is it. If I actually ever finally figure out what I need to do with this caffeine app, I, I download it. Steve, what do I do? Do I need to pay? Do I just? Da- I mean, literally, I download, but I haven't done anything yet. I, I need to check it out. But I guess if I if I could toss one thing Paul's way, is that the one advantage, one main advantage, I should say, he's got many advantages, but and like I said, I already predict Jamie's going to win this. But one main advantage he's got is that Paul is used to being in the spotlight. He's used to feeling the pressure of competitions. He's been there. He's done it. Like the crowds, the the just the the pressure. You know, even back when he used to put his you know face in his hat and just say whatever he said before. Like he's been there. So he has that advantage. That's a key advantage, I guess, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm not backtracking my my th- my prediction, but that's one key advantage he has over Jamie is like, will Jamie crumble under the pressure? You know, he'll start missing tricks that he normally does all the time on his couch. You're like, what the hell? It could happen. But I still think, you know, Jamie's got this. It's his contest to lose. It's in the bag. No, no disrespect to anyone, you know, no, to Paul, of course, because he's facing him. And then whoever faces him, you know, in the finals, it's, it's just over. It, it, it is what it is. You know, it's it's going to come to closure and, and, and fruition. Is, and Jamie's going to be holding that title, plain and simple. So finals night is, like I said, is this Tuesday, June 21st, or a.k.a. tomorrow night, if you're listening to this right now on Monday. Let me know your thoughts. You know, I'm going to try and watch it, like I said, or at least I'll know the results. But I, I'm going to do my best to figure out this caffeine app or what I need to do and all that crazy stuff. But who do you have winning it all? Or do you just not care? And if you say if you say or think that, I'm going to say you're lying. And you're going to end up watching it anyway. You're going to be like me. Just watch it. This is actually a pretty big contest if you think about it. I don't know, just stock up on your popcorn, your adult beverages, or whatever you're drinking. And you know I'm probably going to talk about this next week, so we can talk about it then. But let me know your predictions. Who you got? Who's going to win this thing? Battle of the Barracks 12 Finals. Tomorrow night on the Caffeine app. And yes, that was a free plug, Steve, Eric, all the Barracks crew. Free plug from me. And the caffeine app, you're welcome. Now I just got to go figure this damn thing out. I'll see you guys.